Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back with a haul for you. Um, this will probably take the place of my weekly haul. Um, this is basically an order from FragranceNet and an order from Fragrance X. Uh, yeah, so I probably won't do a weekly haul this week. I'll just let this one kind of stand in for it, even though it is... Well, we'll see. I don't know when I'll post this. Oh, so let's see here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, as you guys know, I have been on such a rose kick lately. I have just been wanting to pick up anything and everything rose. And, m like, most of these are rose fragrances. So I'm going to start off with the first one. Um, this one is one that I have had on my list for quite a while. I just finally pulled the trigger on it. This is Fair Rose, and this is the Eau de Toilette. Um, I'm not sure if there's an Eau de Parfum version of this. If there is, I would love to pick it up. This is so pretty. Um, this is one that after I sprayed it on, my husband commented. He was like, oh, you smell so good. So uh, this one is a winner as far as that goes. The longevity on this guy is not great though. Um, it didn't last very long on me, but that's okay. I can, I can deal with it. So the notes in Fair Rose are peach, mandarin, pomegranate, watermelon, rose, freesia, gardenia, orange blossom, hyacinth, cedarwood, amber, vanilla, and sandalwood. And yeah, this is a huge bottle too, and it was really, really affordable. Like in the, you know, it was 20 something dollars. And I think I picked this one up at Fragrance Net. Um, oh, it's so pretty. This has got such a beautiful watermelon note in it too. You can really smell the watermelon, but without it being too sour or too sweet, if that makes any sense. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful rose-centered fragrance, but it's light and crisp and slightly fruity, and it's got that beautiful watermelon note. I just love it. Nothing groundbreaking by any means, definitely nothing groundbreaking, but if you like just a beautiful, light, crisp, rose, you know, fresh scent that is definitely gonna be a crowd pleaser, and that is probably a pretty safe blind buy, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I sprayed this one on and it probably lasted about four hours or so. Um, so probably not one I could wear to work unless I could find a really nice lotion to layer this over and then I think it would be, you know, really beautiful. But I really love it and knowing me, I probably will still try to wear it to work. I'll just over spray it and saturate my clothes with it and then hopefully it'll, you know, stick around for me. But Anyways, that is Fair Rose. The next one I picked up, I picked up because one of you suggested it, and this uh, particular viewer that suggests, she's the one that suggested I pick up um, Armani C Le Parfum, and Ever since then, if, if she suggests something or recommends something to me, I'm totally going to pick it up because she's got really a great taste in perfume. And so, yeah, this was definitely no exception. She told me to pick up uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique Cabaret. Um, she also mentioned Pin Up. And they are different perfumes, and I was under the impression that they were the same perfume, just in different packaging, but they're not. They are two different perfumes with different sets of notes. Uh, so I picked up Cabaret, and I'm going to be picking up Pin Up very, very soon. But yeah, this one was so tough to get out of the packaging when I first got it, but it's definitely worth it. Okay, so this is what it looks like such a beautiful sparkly red bottle that I adore. I love the Jean-Paul Gaultier bottles. I just think they're so pretty. Um, oh gosh. Oh you guys, I love this so so much. It, it, it smells just like Classique but it's got some added notes um, and it's a little bit sweeter. Oh it's so stunning. So uh, Cabaret's Ginger Orange Blossom Ambergris and Vanilla. So it's the addition of that ambergris. So this is kind of like a... It's slightly salty. It's not overly salty because I'm not crazy about overly salty fragrances, but this is like a slightly salty 
version of uh, Classique. It's got a ton of ginger, a ton of orange blossom, the vanilla, and then just a slightly salty quality to it. So that is a Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique uh, Cabaret, and I will be picking pin, picking up Pin Up very soon. Okay, the next one I picked up is also a subscriber recommendation, and this is an Hermes fragrance. This is Hermes Un Jardin Sur Le Toit, and this is such a beautiful fragrance too. Um, yeah, I I adore this. This is not a safe blind buy. Um, this is, oh gosh, it's so beautiful. Let me just read the notes to you because it is kind of a um, hodgepodge of notes, but in a good way. So, uh, Un Jardin Sur Le Toit is apple, pear, rose, green grass, basil, magnolia, and compost notes. So, so you really get the sweetness from the apple and the pear, but they're light and crisp smelling. You can smell the rose, but it's not like, it's not an in-your-face rose. It's not, you wouldn't smell this and be like, oh, that's a rose fragrance. But you definitely can smell that beautiful rose. But you can definitely smell that green grass note and the basil. And then there's just a slight uh, earthy undertone to it. Ugh, it's gorgeous. It's fresh and clean and crisp and bright and slightly fruity and green. I adore it. If you're into green fragrances, this is definitely like a beautiful, unique green fragrance. I am obsessed with this. I have been loving it ever since I got it. And thank you so much to the person that recommended this to me because I'm in love. So anyways, that is Hermes Un Jardin Sur Le Toit. Okay, and then the next ones that I picked up, these are all from Fragrance Nut. I always pick up samples just because, um, and I picked up a bunch of Hermes samples because I'm really like intrigued with Hermes right now. I haven't smelled a ton from the house, so I'm really wanting to smell more from the house. Uh, the first one I picked up, and I, I told you I've been obsessed with vetiver, uh, so the first one I picked up is Terre d'Hermes. Somebody, there's something that I own that I remember somebody telling me it smells exactly like this. And of course I can't remember what it is now, but it's something. I'll come across it at some point. Uh, I have been wanting to try this. I believe this is marketed towards men. Um, I adore this. I love this one so much. I want a full bottle of it. Uh, this one is basically grapefruit, orange, flint, woodsy notes, oak moss, and benzoin. So just a beautiful, fresh, masculine. It's not like super masculine smelling. I think it's definitely, um, you know, unisex smelling, but I just love how crisp and fresh and lovely it smells. I really like it. I want a full bottle. So that is Terre d'Hermes. The, uh, the next two that I picked up are from the, from the Merveille line, if that's how you say that. I think it's Merveille. Um, yeah, because I, the only one that I've smelled from the Merveille line is the amber one, which I actually uh, quite liked. Now, these two, uh, these ones are okay. So the first one that I picked up is the Elixir de Merveille, and this says a marvelous concentrate gourmand and sensual between candied orange and patchouli. I'm not getting the candied orange, and I think that that's why... Um, Yeah, I'm, well, no, I'm really not getting the candied orange, and I am getting a lot of patchouli, but there's, there's more going on in this, so, uh, this is Peru balsam, vanilla, sugar, amber, sandalwood, tonka bean, patchouli, siam resin, caramel, oak, incense, orange peel, and cedar. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to give this one a go in the cooler months. I think that the problem right now is that it's just too warm for this and I'm not getting all of those lovely notes. Uh, they're just not coming out to me. I'm just getting this kind of um, 
All I'm getting from it right now is kind of like patchouli with like a slight orange hint to it. So yeah, I'm going to hang on to this and test it out in the winter time and see if I feel differently. But that is Elixir de Marvay from Hermes. And then the last sample I picked up is Eau de Marvay. This is the Eau de Toilette. And this is orange, lemon, ginger, amber, pink and black pepper, violet, fir, oak moss, cedar, and vetiver. And this one um, I think I liked a little bit more. Uh, no, this is the one that I didn't love. So the elixir, I think I felt like it was going to be okay, especially in the cooler weather. This is the one that I didn't love because it's quite peppery, and I don't love pepper notes in fragrance. Um, if they're not super peppery, then I really like, you know, or I don't really like them, but I can tolerate it. But if they're, like, super peppery, and this has two different types of pepper in it, so... That's usually all I can smell, and my skin really amplifies the pepper. But again, I'm going to hold on to this and wait until it's a little bit cooler because I just think that these would be better in the cooler months. So that is Eau de Marveille from Hermes. And then moving on to, um, and my battery is about to die, so we'll see if I can make it through this. Okay, moving on to the things that I picked up from um, Fragrance X. So, the first one I picked up is one that I have had my eye on for a very long time. This is called um, Fun Water. This, you can't even find this on Fragrantica. Um, they don't even have the notes listed on Fragrance X, but I can tell you it is like a super, super cheapy freshy. Um, this was seven dollars I think or something but I will tell you I am wearing this today um, it does not last very long you're gonna have to reapply this like every couple hours probably but this smells almost identical to CK1 to me which I adore CK1 and mine is I didn't realize I wasn't getting a sprayer mine is like a um, it's a dabber which I'm gonna just go ahead and dab some more on but it's like I should say not dabber. I should say it's like a pour. This sucker's like a spout. It'll it will just pour out on you, which is kind of nice because it's really easy to get it on. But yeah, mine is like a dabber style. But this smells like I say almost identical to CK1. Ugh, I love it. It's super super unisex. It smells like CK1 to me. I don't know if it's supposed to or what, but. Um, that's the only thing I don't like about these dabber style bottles is eventually the uh, liquid is going to get cloudy because when I t get it on my skin, skin cells and lotion and anything else that's on my skin is going to go back in the bottle, which to me is just gross. But um, yeah, it smells just like CK1. I really like this one and it was super, super cheap. So that is Fun Water and the company that makes it is called... Uh, Del Rye, I think. D E L R U Y. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's that one. The next one I picked up was another Fair Rose, but this is, uh, and it, the the house is Gianfranco Fair, and this one is called Blooming Rose. So this is a flanker to rose. And when I first sprayed this one, I didn't think I was going to like it. Um, it smelled, at first it smelled super generic to me. Oh gosh, but now I adore this. So I sprayed these on when I, or sprayed this one as well as another one on when I first got it. And they came in the mail yesterday, probably at about, I don't know, 3, 30, 4 o'clock. And I sprayed it on just one part of my arm. And I'm telling you, I thought, oh gosh, this is going to be one of those that just wears away in two hours. I'm not going to be able to smell it. I could still smell it on that part of my arm. Like the deep dry down of it on that part of my arm when I woke up this morning. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to give this one a good test. I'm going to work test this one. Because I think it'll be a crowd pleaser. Uh, super safe blind buy. So... This one is uh, pomelo, black currant, raspberry, jasmine, freesia, rose oil, white wood, cedar, and sandalwood. It's gorgeous. 
It is not as crisp or fresh smelling as the original. Uh, there's a some, something a little bit creamy in this one. Um, a little bit, it's a little bit woody. It's just pretty, very safe crowd-pleasing. Um, I'm really excited to give this one a good test, and you guys will see this in a What I Wore Last Week video. So anyways, that is Gianfranco Fair Blooming Rose. The next one is another one that was uh, recommended to me by one of you. This is Davidoff Coolwater um, Sea Rose Caribbean Summer Edition. <laughs> So I do have the original Sea Rose coming, uh, which I'm excited to get. This one, this one I'm going to need to give it a wear test, but my first impressions, I don't love it. Um, and the reason why, let me give it a spray so I can remember why. because it doesn't smell like anything to me. I don't get any rose in it at all. I think that that's why. Yeah, I don't smell any rose. Now, I need to give this a good test. I need to give it a chance, but just smelling it out of the bottle and uh, the little initial spray I did on my arm, first of all, it, it wore off in like 10 minutes, and second of all, I don't smell any rose in it, but that could just be, um, I'm just not giving it a good enough chance. So. Let's see. Caribbean Rose is Mandarin, Nashi Pear, Rose, and Cashmere. In. I have recently bought so many fragrances with Nashi Pear as a note in it, and I love that note. It's so beautiful, but right now I'm just not getting much from this. Um, but I will give this a good wear, and I will update you guys on it. So anyways, that is uh, Davidoff Cool Water for Women. Sea Rose Caribbean Summer Edition, which I'm going to keep it in its box in case I need to uh, move it along. The last one I picked up, I was so excited to get this one, and uh, there are some really good things about this one, and then some not so good things about this. This is Cavatine Rose, and I have had my eye on this one for a long time because. Um, well, because I've been really into rose fragrances. I adore this little bottle. Like, how cute is this little one-ounce bottle? And the lids on these perfumes are so pretty. Um, this, to me, this to me is not rose at all. And that's why I was so disappointed, because I was so looking forward to, like, this beautiful, light... I don't know, airy rose fragrance. I was expecting something that was going to smell kind of run of the mill, kind of easy, safe. This is actually quite unique for being a rose fragrance, but because to me it doesn't smell at all like rose. Um, to me, this is a tuberose fragrance because that's really all I smell when I smell this is tuberose, which I adore tuberose, but I have so many tuberose fragrances in my collection. Um, I don't need another tuberose fragrance. Not that I need another rose one either, but I was really hoping for rose. So, uh, Cavatine Roses, Cherry Blossom, Pear, Dewy Green Leaves, Pekaki Jasmine, Tuberose, Pepper, Sandalwood, Vetiver, and Musk. And yeah, all I'm getting, and I'm sure that the Pekaki Jasmine is really like playing well with that tuberose but it really just ends up smelling like tuberose to me. So if you're looking for a beautiful, inexpensive tuberose fragrance, um, Cavatine Rose is gorgeous. But if you're looking for a rose fragrance, don't look to Cavatine Rose because it is definitely not rose. Um, I will tell you, I, this is another one that I sprayed on my other arm and I could still smell this this morning when I woke up and I had sprayed it on my arm just in a little spot like when I first got it and I could still smell it there when I woke up, like the deep dry down of it. So um, I think, and I think when I was reading reviews of this one, people were saying that it didn't last long on them at all. Man, this thing lasted forever on me. So yeah, if you're looking for like a good little inexpensive, um, like tuberose fragrance, check out Cavatine Rose because it's really, really beautiful um, if you're looking for that. So 
anyways yeah that one is cavatine rose so that is it guys those are all of the fragrances that i hauled recently from fragrance net and fragrance x i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe before you leave and i will see you on my next one bye